Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you how to create a streaming API with .NET Core. Uh, well, .NET Core ASP, if I was to be exact. So, when I say streaming API, all I really mean is that when you make a HTTP request, you get a stream, and that usually you actually put a lot of data into that stream, and you're finished in a typical ASP.NET uh, web API call. Uh, what we're going to do now is actually we're going to just stream data into that persistent HTTP connection. So how do we do that in .NET? Well, let's get started. Let's create a new project. It's going to be an ASP.NET Core application. It's going to be a web API, and we're going to give it a name, uh, a streaming, streaming, streaming API. Okay, so we're going to create this application. And this is our typical application that you would see your file new project, basically web API. If we run this application, wait for a browser to appear on some screen on the other screen of course let's move this over and you can see that basically you can actually make a request for the weather forecast so if we just try that out and execute it you can see really what's making this is just swagger which comes out of the box there i think since .NET 6 but let's uh, just make the raw request ourselves. so here you see we actually get the response now where's that response coming from this response is an enumerable so we get one to five items and we're selecting just a new weather forecast so we're getting back five of these objects and you can see these objects here one two three four five okay so let's go back and let's make this async so we're going to turn this into a task sorry an async and we're going to call async enumerable and what we're going to do is create an index equal to zero. So we're going to use that index here. And we're going to remove the enumerable range. Oops. Enumerable range. And we are just going to yield return new weather forecast. Okay. Now we want this to happen in a loop, so we're going to go while, while something, let's yield return that. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is have the cancellation token. Okay, and let's take the advice of Ryder here. Add the attribute, so while not, cancellation token dot is cancellation requested, we're going to yield return that, and of course we want to change our index a little bit and we also don't want this to happen without any kind of delay in the system we want to be able to see this happening so what we're going to do is await and we're going to wait task delay and let's just put in a lovely magic number one second okay so now let's run this so we wait for the browser again here we go so we just close what we've already opened and you can see that i've already done a sample earlier on but here we're just refreshing it here you can see that we have basically the response now every second we got new data streaming so we're connected with just chrome chrome has that persistent connection that stream that http stream connection to the server and the server is waking up every now and again one second in our case and it's returning data to the client. So I hope that's of help to someone. It's a nice, easy way to kind of keep the memory footprint or memory pressure on your server down by just having a streaming API.